Okay, so hello everybody. Um, my name is Simon Harris and I'm the founder and um, director of My Salon Manager. And we're delighted to be with you here today. We are um, we work a lot with Weller Salons and the Weller management team, <clears throat> supporting salons all across the UK, Scotland and Wales in business uh, development and business growth, uh, strategizing for your business and finance. I'm delighted to announce I have with me on the meeting today, Craig Spratt. Craig is from LB Group. Craig, would you like to just introduce yourself a little bit about what you do and um, why we've got you on the call today? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Simon. So yeah, my name is Craig Spratt. I work for LB Group. So we're a firm of chartered accountants based in Chelmsford in Essex. Um, what I do is I look after a, a portfolio of, of small businesses and, and over the years I've sort of built up a bit of a bit of a portfolio and sort of hair salons and, and businesses uh, alike really. So um, we've been advising them for the well ever since lock, the first lockdown began really um, and all the matters we're going to go through today. So um, Simon's has given me a shout and asked me to give him a bit of a hand with this, this video. Yeah, so that's great. Thanks, Craig. And Craig is, of course, my salon manager's accountant, and he also looks after Raymond Batoni's salon, my, my business partner and my salon manager, and looks after my personal accounts as well on, on my consultancy side. So we're, we're really pleased to have your level of expertise on the call today, because obviously I have a limited knowledge of, of all things finance, but uh, it'll be great to have that level of expertise. So one of the things that's really important that um, all channels need to take right now while we are locked down. So we just want to make sure that you, you're very clear about the things you must do and can do and should be doing. So step one is really to run a simple PL for the next two months. So we need to understand like we've got nothing coming in, no income, no, we're not doing any haircuts, we're not doing any, any, um, any services whatsoever, but we still got some costs. So the most important thing at this stage is consider what can you reduce? So what are the things you're paying out that you can kind of bring down? And what can you defer? Basically, what can you stop paying now and put off to a later date? Because there are some things you can defer, some things you absolutely can't. So this is uh, an exercise which you all should be running. We run this with all our My Salon Manager clients. We did it in the first lockdown, we did it in the November lockdown, and we're obviously doing it now. And the trouble with this one, like in the spring of last year, is we have no idea how long this is. This one is going to last. It's definitely going to be January and February, I would have said, without question. How much further it goes on obviously depends on how, how the cases go in terms of the, the region you're in. So these are the three key upcoming expenditures. If you're watching this and we haven't got to the 31st of January, then self-assessment is clearly due, isn't it? That's correct, isn't it, Craig? And, yep. um, you know, that's one of the hot potatoes, which particularly if people deferred last year, last July's payment. And uh, the VAT liability. And of course, if you rent your or lease your premises, rent will be a, a, another thing that we should be probably about to pay or we have just paid and then we may be considering what we got to pay next and what that looks like. So Craig, can I just get some more detail on this one from you about the, the things that you can defer and perhaps you'd like to just explain this slide and, and, and how that actually works. Sure, yeah, <clears throat> so uh, first one on your slide then, um, we've got VAT there. Now, initially you could have deferred that, that payment that was due between March and June last year and the original plan was that you had to get that paid across by the 31st of March uh, this year. Um, HMRC have actually launched a new scheme, so they're going to let you actually opt in. And rather than paying it all in one go, you can pay that in 11 installments up until March 2022. Um, oh, that's interest free. That's amazing. No penalties. Yeah. yeah. And so the, what you do need to do is you actually need to opt into this scheme. It's not an automatic thing. However, okay. um, as with a lot of things at the moment, HMRC haven't actually made that scheme live, so you can't do it just yet, but but just keep your eye on that one because that is something you can do. Um, you know, and it, I, I, would, I would recommend doing that. Like with everything we're probably going to go through today, sort of cash is, cash is king. I know it's cliche, yes. but if yeah. you can defer that further, then why, why would you not do that? I think it's a... It's an so just to be clear, the, the, the HMRC are allowing you to defer, they're not going to invite you to do it, you have to actually physically go into the uh, <clears throat> HMRC VAT website. Well, we don't know how, we don't know the mechanism of how it's going to work yet. All they've said is it will be an opt-in scheme. It won't, it won't just be an automatic one, it will be an opt-in, but they've not said how exactly you, you do opt-in yet. So if someone's due to pay their VAT on the 31st of January, for example, what would be your best advice? <laughs> 
So the, the, if you've got to pay the VAT, you know, the VAT you've got to pay by the end of January, that's not going to be covered by this by this deferment scheme. Okay. Um, so if you are struggling with that, like with any of your taxes at the moment, what I would recommend you do is you actually get onto um, HMRC's COVID helpline. Yeah. Um, and from there, you can speak to someone at HMRC. They're, they're being very lenient at the moment. So they are letting people put payments, payment plans in place for, for any and any taxes at the moment. Yeah. Um, whether that's six months or 12 months. Um, I guess yeah. the answer to all of these things is don't bury your head in the sand and wait for it Definitely to go not. away. You've got no. to be proactive, contact <clears throat> HMRC yeah. right away, explain you haven't got the cash to, to pay this, camp that offer to put, do a payment plan. That's yeah. always the best way forward. And, and, and what you said there, proactive, that, that <clears throat> is the key word. If you, if you let the deadline pass and don't do anything, you're going to find it so much harder to, to pick up the phone to HMRC and get them to give you a payment plan and yeah. if you actually do it in advance, they'll be yeah. much more receptive to it. Yeah, and uh, you know they're they're it's sympathetic to the situation that yeah. that all sounds all businesses about to close are in. So, and I guess it's a similar kind of thing for the self assessment. You know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm self employed, so I've I have just paid my January um, payment because I just like to get it done and, and over with. I don't want this hanging over. But people yeah. who haven't been able to do that, um, again. HMRC, it's not officially yep. published yet, but they are. They're, they're yeah, so again, what they recommend you to do is just, it's just uh, if, you, if you Google HMRC COVID helpline, just give them a call on that number. And then from there, they will speak to you to find out what the circumstances are. And hopefully they'll put a payment plan in place for you. But the return's got to go in. That's the thing that's. Oh, that yeah, yeah, go absolutely. Through. Yeah, without, without your return being in, they won't even speak to you about it. So the return has to go in. At, at the moment, late filing penalties are still standing as well. So if you don't file your return by the end of January, they, they will penalise you for that. Oh, really? Still? Yeah. And it doesn't cost any money to file your tax return, so people should be doing that anyway. Yeah. That's not, yeah. that's not, there's no excuse that you can't say, well, my business is closed. In fact, you've got time in your hands to actually do it. You can't even say you've not got the time yeah. to do it. Yeah. If you're sitting at home, you know, waiting for lockdown to end. And with corporation tax, what's, what's the, what will be the difference here for those that have got limited companies? <clears throat> uh, well, <clears throat> again, the same rules really apply for corporation tax as well. Yeah. So um, you have to get the return in absolutely on time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you, the, the, the payment deadlines are still the same as they were before. Yeah. The difference being, again, is that HMRC are just being more lenient now. If you do need you know, help to pay, then, then give that H HMRC hotline a call and they will, they will hear you out and hopefully put a payment plan in place for you. Okay, so the message very clearly here is be proactive with everything. Yeah. Start to understand what goes out of your account every single month and try to work out how you can defer some of these payments by contacting the suppliers or the, you know, the agency that supply those services to you. If you owe tax, if you owe VAT, get straight on COVID, HMRC, COVID helpline. Yeah. You know, I'm assuming this is not, you're not going to get through straight away. So you're going to have to have some patience uh, hanging on until you can actually speak to a human being. But it's worth doing because you they will allow you to set up a payment plan with something affordable. OK, so that's great, great advice, um, Craig. So thank you so much for that. Um, this is the bit about the other stuff. So, you know, if you lease a premises, we've been encouraging our clients to contact the landlords and have a very frank conversation with them say, look, you know, we're not necessarily looking for you to give me, a, give me the place rent free, but we're looking to see if we can at least defer the rent or if we could pay a small proportion of the rent now and maybe the defer, defer the rent. I mean, in your experience, are landlords being relatively sympathetic to that for your other clients? Yeah, actually they are. <laughs> um, a lot of clients I've spoken to, even recently, um, they are they are being quite open to that. Um, like you said, a lot of them are either putting sort of holiday, plan, you know, payment holidays in place, or some of them are even agreeing sort of rent reductions for that period. And we, yeah. We've seen that from the first lockdown onwards, really. Yeah, and so the one the clients we've talked to, we find a mixed response. Some absolutely not interested. They're saying, "Well, you're getting a grant, you can use that to pay the rent," which I think is very harsh. Um, others have been very sympathetic. Um, some have actually been contacting the, the, uh, our members and saying, look, we know you're not open. Forget about the rent for two months. We'll worry about it when you come back, which I think is, you know, just to have that peace of mind is, is really good. Um, we've definitely told all our owners to not pay their product suppliers. Not <laughs> at all, but just to say, can we please hold, up, hold off from 
paying you for this amount of stock until we reopen and we've got some cash flow. Most of the suppliers, and I'm sure Weller is no different, are being very sympathetic and, and you know, as long as there's no huge uh, historical debt there, but if people are normally good payers, you know, they settle their bills every 30 days or 45 days, whatever the terms of their uh, trading agreement are, I think most suppliers are being fairly um, lenient in that respect. Um, but the key is here, discuss a payment plan. Look, I can't pay you right now, I've got no income, but can we talk about a payment plan? You know, because I'm aware that my product costs, my bills might be overdue, but you know, I've got no money coming in. And, and that you think again, suppliers should be fairly reasonable with that. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it just goes back to um, just trying to be as proactive as possible, have an honest and open conversation with them. And uh, unless, you don't, unless you ask them, you don't know, do you? So it's worth, it's worth a conversation yeah. in 10 minutes yeah. of your time. What's the worst they can do? Say no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, in my experience, people, are, people understand the seriousness of this. And I, I think, you know, a landlord wouldn't want to put their tenant out of business because then they're faced with another problem. They're going to have an empty shop, empty salon, Nobody's going to want it because of the state of the high street, you know, yeah. probably free for some while. So it's better to have the tenant you've got work with them on, on a payment plan or deferment of rent or something so that you've always got you've got a great tenant in there. Yeah. So let's talk about the grants. Um, now, straight off the bat, this applies to England. There are regional differences in Scotland. There are regional differences in Wales. But the principle is still the same. Is that correct? as far as we know but just the amount slightly slightly changed so do you want to just talk us through these um key points here sure yeah so as far <laughs> as i know the principles um in the uk still apply personally i've only worked on on uh, english-based businesses so i, I can't 100 percent guarantee on the other countries but as far as i know the same principles do apply um so yes you are entitled to grants from the local authorities um, if you're in the retail, hospitality and leisure um, sectors, which, which you know, everyone watching this video will be. Um, now, you've, you've got two types of grant, basically. You've got the, the grant for being closed in, in the national lockdown, which is, which is based on think, every 42 days. And it's based on your rateable value of your business as well, or your business premises, I should say, as well. So um, depending on... on um, I've got, I've got them here, depending on the size. Yeah, so any anything um, anything with a rateable value below 15K, you can get just over 2,000 a month or every 42 day period. Anything between 15K and 51K, it's, it's 3,000 every 42 day period. And anything above um, 51K, you can get 4,500 for every 42 day period. Um, there was also the same thing applied to the, between the lockdown that we had between, in November. Um, yeah. So um, the same principles apply in terms of the rateable value, but the amounts were slightly less. So it's 1,334, 2,000 or 3,000. Um, and do you have to apply for these, Craig, or are these automatically triggered by the, by the local council? Is there, a, is there a process by which you apply <laughs> for both yes. of these grants? So you are, you are meant to be applying for those. So you're meant to be going onto your local authority's website. Okay. Um, and from there, I'm, I'm hoping it's fairly obvious when you go onto their website how you make that application. Okay, okay. And um, I, my understanding is, and in fact, I do know a few clients who have actually started to receive the funds. A client down in um, the South Coast in Bournemouth, okay. she received hers yesterday. She got the two local uh, discretionary grants and the top-up grant as well. So she had quite a significant okay. sum of money landed yeah. on the campus today. That's good. I, so, I think what, what we've heard is it, it does largely depend on um, council to council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But definitely at some point this money will become available, but yeah. you have to get onto the local council's website, register to claim against that, you know, for this money, and then you will get it. You can't just sit and wait for it to happen. No, no. Be, again, be, be proactive, get onto them. <clears throat> okay. um, in, in addition to that as well, there is also this uh, another one-off grant that you mm. can claim. Um, again, based on the same rateable values of your property, mm. but it's, it's just a flat one-off amount. So, uh, and the amounts are 4K, 6K or 9K, depending on the size of your, of your business. Yeah, rate yeah. Of value, yes. Okay. Yeah, and the same application process as well. Right, okay, brilliant. That's really worth knowing. Furloughs continuing to pay 80%, but with a difference this time, the employer has to pay employers' national insurance and pension contributions. For some, yeah. and I'm, 
I'm perplexed why the government have decided that this time they're not going to cover that. Is it because of the two lots of grant? Is that why they've done it? I'm not, I'm not sure is the honest truth why they've gone the way they've gone for that this time around, but that, no, that is the way that they're doing it now. Um, and just a couple of other points on on the furlough. So you just need to be quick in making that claim for it because at the minute it's open up until the end of April. And for each month that you claim, you need to be claiming that by the 14th day of the following month. So oh, that's Jan didn't know that. Yeah, so for example, <clears throat> January's claim, you need to have claimed that by the by the fifth, uh, 14th of February. February, oh, okay. Yeah. That, that's yeah, yeah. Really so you have to, you have to get that. those, yeah, you have to get those in quite quick because once you miss yeah. that deadline, you won't be able to get anything. Oh, okay, that's really interesting. So that's, I hope everybody logs that away. But I think most people do, I mean, yeah. Once you've paid your wages, we've really got nothing in the bank. You're very motivated to get yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't in. imagine there's two people missing that deadline. <laughs> exactly. So self-employment support scheme. This is now the third grant, which uh, yeah. covers up to 29th of January. There's um, a view that there'll probably be another one. What do you Th think? There's, yeah, there's rumblings of it. Nothing, nothing sort of confirmed yet. Um, Using logic, you would think that there would be mm -hmm. simply because the furlough is going up until the end of April. We, we know we're locked down until, I don't know, I would say even the beginning of April. So it would make sense for there to be a yeah. fourth claim, but there's, yeah. there's been nothing confirmed yet. So um, just no. okay. keep your eyes peeled on that one. And so basically no business rates being paid at the moment until April 21. Correct. So that's just been completely held. And then Correct. finally bounce back loan. Now this was, um, extended the term that you have the time you had to pay it back that was extended was that during november they extended that to 10 years yes yeah so initially they when they brought out the bounce back loan i think it was a, a six-year repayment period mm. um but they have extended that and I, I believe the way it's going to work is that when your first year is up and you have to start making repayments your your bank will actually contact you and ask you if you want to extend that six years into a 10-year Oh, okay. Years. So I think that's the way that's going to just work. literally wait until the first month's payments due. I mean, it is the cheapest money you'll ever get, basically. Yeah, yeah. Until and the month of ten is is yeah very yeah. cheap. So, and, and, uh, and what we've told what we've told a lot of our clients, and I'm not sure whether you're the same, is that even if you don't think you need it now, it so might be yeah. worth just applying for this. Put yeah. it in the bank. You know, it can. It's your, it's your safety net. If you don't need it exactly. after a year, just pay it back. You pay it back with no penalties, no yep. um, no early repayment or anything like that. You can just literally, if you borrowed twenty grand, sat on it for a year, you could pay back twenty grand, and not even make a single payment. It's correct. Correct. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and love just those lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and just another thing, just to add on to that. So, um, historically, if you've taken the bounce back loan, but you didn't take the full amount you was entitled to. Um, up until the end of January, you can actually um, almost reapply to, to get the balance of that. So you can really? use up your full entitlement. Yeah, that's only until the end of January now. It's up to 50,000, I think is the, um, but that depends on the um, profits of your business. It does, yeah. So it's it's the lower of 50,000 or 25% of your annual turnover. Your turnover, right, okay. Yep. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you had a 200,000 pound turnover, you can you could borrow fifty grand. That's it. Yeah, yeah. But anything below that, you you'd be restricted. Hundred thousand, you could borrow twenty five thousand. And that's it. Months. Yeah. And any any new bounce back loans, you've got until the end of March um, to apply for that. That's really useful. Okay. So I mean, there is a you know I know people have felt a bit left behind. Right. Now there there are two sectors of the uh, working the business owners that have been left in the cold. That's newly self employed, although they are now revisiting that and saying actually we will take the newly self-employed providing their tax returns in by the 31st of January and they will look at that self um, self-employed support scheme for that category but they still have done nothing for directors of limited companies directors of small limited companies have they not really I mean I mean technically you can apply to furlough yourself but the, the way directors are, are kind of set up is that we we typically have them on like a what we call a small uh, nick minimum salary and it's yeah. only 80 percent of that and again if you've been working as as most directors have to try and keep their business afloat it's then anyway. it's hard to say you really qualify no. for that anyway so and i do feel that's the forgotten sector here in um yeah in this whole thing and i, I whether that's because the, the, me the mechanism of trying to calculate how much they could claim but i mean it, in my view it should be this, similar to the self-employed support scheme but 
look, it is what it is. We can't change that. But, but as long as they're, as everybody understands that these schemes work, these grants, and the, the, they're utilising the bounce back loan fully, even if they don't, as you say, ultimately need it. Okay, so then we kind of look at the small stuff, but it still mounts up. Looking at utility companies, I mean, most um, salons will have set up a fairly hefty monthly direct debit with their utility companies based on usage of a salon being open. So there's, you know, heating, air conditioning, tumble dryers, washing machines, hair dryers, lighting, these are all the stuff. So, we, you know, hairdressers are typically pretty hefty users of um, light and heat, uh, gas and electricity. So I would always be saying to them, go to your um, supplier, suggest that you go just to paying your standing order, st you know, standing charge and defer um, everything else to when we reopen. I think that's probably fairly achievable at the moment. And then looking at things like drinks, looking at towels, this is a good time to look at your coffee machine, looking at where you buy it, you know, if you have disposable towels, can you find cheaper source of disposable towels? Accountancy fees. We know, Craig, that you're incredibly reasonable, reasonably priced and give amazing value for money. So anybody that's concerned no. about paying high accountancy fees, 100% should contact you and your details will be on, on the back end of the presentation. Um, because often fees are high, services low. You know, we do see this a lot in accountants. They're not, they're not, uh, you try and contact your accountant, they don't bother to phone you back. You email them, they don't bother to email you back. You know, a lot of, a lot of people get frustrated because I have to say my experience of using you, Craig, immediate response. So great value for money. Uh, and I recommend anybody that's not completely 100% with their accountant should be contacting Craig and his team at LB Group. Um, yeah. We should be looking to pause our waste collection because there's no waste being generated. Look at things like pausing subscriptions on magazines, you, look, you know, any kind of loyalty thing you pay into, pausing flowers. I mean, a lot of people have said, oh, you know, my software company won't, um, won't do anything. So, well, you know, they're still running. They're still running their servers. People are still coming in with queries. People are still logging into their software. So I think we should go easy on the software uh, companies. We need them to run our business. So, uh, you know, in my view, I think that they're, they're fairly essential. One uh, couple of other things you could consider is asking staff to use up their unused holiday during closure. We realise that you can, while you've got staff furloughed, you can actually write to them. You have to give them twice the amount of notice as the amount of holiday you want them to take. So if you want them to take a week's holiday, you've got to give them two weeks notice of that week's holiday in writing. And then you top them up uh, to their usual holiday pay so you just pay the difference between the furlough pay and the um their usual holiday pay so that's a good thing because you don't want to you know because they're accruing holiday while they're on furlough and then you could end up they've got tons of holiday owed both from last year this year and they are hardly at work for the remainder of 2021 because they're they're on holiday trying to use it all up so there's an option to roll holiday over but you can ask staff to take holiday whilst on furlough, as long as you give them the right number amount of notice. A lot of the suppliers like Weller are offering free training, free remote training for salons and their staff, which is a great benefit. We should be making use of that. Um, we need to consider how we're continuing to train apprentices during this time. Um, there's a cost to that, but you know we don't want a completely disengaged, demotivated workforce of apprentices. So I think that's something that salons should really consider. Um, disengagement from teams is quite common. I mean, you're all in your group, Craig, you're all working from home. How do you all yeah. kind of stay connected while you're, uh, while you're doing that and not being in an office environment? Um, it's, it's tough, but um, we yeah. do Zoom meetings, a lot of Zoom meetings, uh, catching up on Zoom, um, yeah. you know, a lot of ringing around, phoning each other up. Um, the way we work is, you know, we have a lot like, like probably the way a lot of salons work, they have people in you know, there are trainees and they, they're quite reliant on, on being trained by some of the more senior members of the staff. So they're, they're constantly on Zoom with each other or, or, or phoning each other for help and guidance. So fortunately, yeah, we, we have got technology such as Zoom and, and Microsoft Teams. It does make it quite easy, but we, yeah. we, we catch up a lot. Yeah, because it is hard. It is important because you, otherwise you end up being a bit fragmented, don't you? And some people around the periphery of the, of the business can sort of feel a bit and just completely disengage. And yeah. It's about what we're advising our members is that you've got to get a feel for what's the right amount of contact for your staff, what's too much. You don't want to bombard them all the yeah, time. Yeah. So just fed up. But equally, what's not enough? You know, so it's about just sort of testing the water a bit. With how are you? Is there anything you need? You know, 
we're doing a, a, a session on Friday afternoon. If you'd like to join in, it's, you know, it's going to be great. I mean, you know, we, we try to give the, uh, the right amount of support for our members, for example. And just one example, tomorrow, we've got one of our members who's a, who's a fantastic platform artist and educational stylist. She's doing um, a demo online and we've got 250 people joining it, all members and their staff. So there's an appetite for this kind of activity. And, uh, you know, we're not charging, it's, it's free for our members and, and their staff. We have 250 people who've signed up for it, which is, we actually had to have a, a, up our subscription to Zoom to get that many people to, to be able to, to log in. So, so it's staying in touch, keep engaged, but just bear in mind that it don't bombard people because it's, it's just too much, isn't it? So, Craig, we, we, we've come to the end of the presentation. I want to say a huge thank you to you for giving up your time today. I know you're really busy. It's January. It's the, like the busiest month of the year for you. So I, I want to thank you so much for, for taking out some of your day. I, I'm going to leave your details on screen. So if people want to contact you by email, uh, take a look at your website. I can thoroughly recommend Craig and, and the great service that him and his team offer us. So. Thank you very much. Um, again, thank you so much for your uh, time today, Craig. You're very welcome.